Okay, let's talk about creating our own macros here and some macro buttons. Okay, the first thing I want to show you is you under the macro organizer menu, you select macro organizer. And you'll see down here, show macro folder finder. This is important because at the moment, there's only a reset back to the factory reset. There's really no way to manage your macro bars to keep version control or different types of macro toolbars. So I'm going to show you that what we've got here, and it brings up this thing here, and your command bar XML is your macro bar. Here you can see it's got all the icons embedded actually in the macro bar. So that's what all this uh, code is here for. This is a place if you had to make a, make a copy of this thing, make multiple copies of this thing, because if you're going to go in and edit it or something, you mess it up, you need to be able to go back to the original set etc if, if you work I, I always make a copy of my bar and name it something like my bar or something so that i have different versions and at least one one because it's too easy to uh, reset the macro bar and lose all your work so i recommend that you do a little of that up front before you get started but now i'm just gonna go ahead and say i want to select a new or create a new macro just name this one marker Add a bridge as an example. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go over here and type in marker so that we filter the list down to just markers. And we see we have an option here to insert a marker with the name. So I'll add that in there. And if we double click on the name, it'll bring it up. And we'll type in the word bridge. And then we'll, uh, just for grins, we'll go ahead and open up the uh, marker track so you can see that it's added that in. I'll go ahead and move that up in front of it so it'll open up the marker track and then add the word bridge in automatically. So I'll go ahead and click, oh, put that in a group called markers. Since there's already one made for it, you can name it anything you want with descriptions. We'll come back to that in a second. Go ahead and finish there and go down to the markers and here's your bridge. If I wanted to test that one, I could run it. So um, let's go ahead and close this down. Just, oops, close that down. And then we'll try, um, running that macro from the menu first, just to kind of get it, make sure it's all debugged and worked out. Look under markers and there's our marker add bridge. And I'll click on that and it added, added a marker where the cursor was and named it bridge with a typo in it. Well, we're going to throw that one away anyway. So it's just a demo at this point. So I'll go back to the organizer. And you see, I've already gone through and added a few, like add course, add verse. And most importantly, you want to make sure that you map some hotkeys to these things to make them useful. So I've gone through and already mapped a C and V to course and verse. So if I hit, just type C in my keyboard, it inserts a course um, marker. And I'll say I'm going to go over here and put in a verse. There's a verse. And here's another verse, another verse, and then here's another course already one supplied with uh, the macro toolbar that shows that inserts all, a lot of these names in standard positions across uh, every 12 bars of the song and it puts quite a few of them in you may not use some of them you probably end up deleting more than you insert I like this approach because you just use them as you need them there's a there's a there's a chorus there's a verse you know it's that simple Okay, so now let's just go do a little more maintenance here. I'm going to macros. I'm going to go ahead and call it bridge, edit it. And you notice I have a typo in there. I'll go ahead and get rid of that typo with the back, ever back. And then I'm going to show you how to how you map these things to your uh, hotkeys. Now, uh, it would be nice if they had a button down here that just said, uh, give me your mic cut keys, but right now you have to do is go to your options, go to keyboard shortcuts, and here you can see our markers. There's the marker bridge one, so I could map hotkey to it. This is where you would this is where I've mapped C to chorus and then I've mapped V to burst. And that's all it takes to do that. Now let's go ahead and see what it takes to uh, add that into the toolbar. So I'm going to go ahead up here and say Add a new group, and we'll rename that group Markers. 
and then we'll add a new button and I'm going to assign a macro to that button of mar add chorus and then I'll add another one in here that's new button we'll go ahead and add verse assign a macro verse and a lot of that text shows up there we're going to get rid of that text almost immediately so on this one I'm just going to right mouse click on it and just remind myself what it is I'll just leave the V there or the word verse I guess and I'm going to go ahead and say add a select an icon and I've already gone in and um, created icons now there is a tool out there on the internet you can get for free it's available on Windows and the Mac uh, I just tried this one out. I I know I personally use uh, Photoshop to do this, but uh, you can get a free icon editor out there, uh, GNU Image Manipulation Program, and I'll just drag it in over here. It's called GIMP. If you uh, Google GIMP, you'll you'll see it, and it allows you to. Here's my macro look location. What I've done is I've in Studio One. Uh, I've created in the macros directory where it stores your macros we showed you earlier I've gone in and added a directory called resources and this is where I put all my icons um, particular icons let's say I want to edit that one right there so I've gone in and we'll go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit so you can see it I've taken that pin and added a V to it I just type the letter V on top of it edit it saved it. Other important thing here is transforming your image, or excuse me, changing your canvas sizes, or resampling the size of your icon, because you want them to be 22 by 22. Anything larger than 22 by 22 will not fit within the box on the, on the toolbar, and you know, it'll look fine, but it, it, it'll kind of look uh, strange because it'll cover up the box. So that's what I've got done there, and I just saved that away with this. this is, like I said, this is a free tool. Uh, this is on Windows. They say there's one available for the Mac, too. So uh, check around on the Internet. Maybe you can find one that's uh, easier to use, and there are definitely free ones out there. So I'll go ahead and uh, move all that out of the way. And we've created this guy right there, and I'll go ahead and just select him. And so there it shows up in the the macro toolbar and I'll go ahead and just erase the word verse here and there you go there is a new marker for setting verses and whenever I click my cursor I click that and the word verse shows up so there's how you create macros with nifty uh, icons how to edit the icons if you don't want to edit the icons you can just go ahead and change the text to something that is meaningful to you and keep it down to size there you go it's that simple I highly recommend that you back up your macro set, that you uh, you make copies of specifically of your command um, XML. Let me go ahead and bring that up one more time just to show you of your macros directory. You make copies of your uh, command bar XML. Rename one to command bar my bar if you if you put a lot of work into it. When you hit the reset button on the, the system right here, reset toolbar, it will actually back make a backup of, of the. It'll create a command bar uh, dot backup, which is your your current version. And before it rewrites it with the supplied command bar XML from the factory. Grab that command bar dot backup immediately and name it to something useful because you may want to have multiple versions. I actually keep multiple versions as I'm working on it. Maybe you like the icons on one bar versus another, and as you develop it and get it a little bit better. Maybe in the future they'll give us the ability to actually do some manipulation with the tool. But at this point you have to do it outside the system. There you go. That's how easy it is to create your own macros. And uh, that should do it. Thanks.